Welcome to Ask Psych Sessions, where we ask some of the best teachers we know questions from you, our audience. If you would like to submit a question, please go to bit.ly backslash ask psych sessions. That's B-I-T dot L-Y backslash ask psych sessions. All lowercase, all one word. And here's our next question. Today on Ask Psych Sessions, we are speaking with Erica Wojcik, who is on the faculty at Skidmore College. Thanks for joining us, Erica. Happy to be here. Thanks for thanks for inviting me on. So I uh, wanted to speak with you because I saw on our STP Facebook page, uh, someone linked out to a Twitter post by you where you have started to put together a database containing uh, research articles uh, from a BIPOC perspective. So can you tell the listeners a little bit about um, why you did this and, and what they could find there? Yeah, so this, um, you know, the, the, this started, this project started uh, last week on the Blackout STEM Strike for Black Lives Day when, you know, I was spending the day thinking about um, uh, racism in the academy and how I could be anti-racist in the classroom. And and one thing that I've done in the past with, with some of my own courses is, is take a look and, and try to decolonize or diversify um, my syllabi, syllabi by kind of calculating how many white authors I'm having students read and, and really purposefully trying to include more diverse perspectives by including um, uh, researchers who, who aren't white. Um, and so as I was thinking about that, I was thinking about, hey, I know there's lots of people now that are um, trying to do this as well. And I don't, you know, it'd be really nice to have a centralized location where people could go to find papers by authors in psychology who aren't white. Um, and, you know, I thought, okay, I could, I could kind of put this together myself for developmental. And then I was thinking, you know, the best way to do this is to have kind of crowdsource it, right? Kind of get everyone to contribute to a big database um, that would consist of psychology papers across all subfields um, that include authorship, co-authors or, you know, uh, uh, or one author or more um, from um, black and digital or, and, and people of color. Um, and, and what I really like about, you know, the emergence of this term BIPOC, right, uh, is that it really highlights the fact that, uh, you know, there are certain minorities who have been more uh, more affected by white supremacy, right, Black and Indigenous populations. But it's also inclusive of other people of, of color as well, um, because there is a general whiteness problem in psychology. And so um, I kind of launched this, this spreadsheet that you can, there's a Google form that anyone can fill out. Um, and, and submit and, and self submissions are very, very encouraged. Um, and then I kind of moderate those submissions and put them all in this spreadsheet. Um, and, you know, each paper has the, a link to the paper, what subfield, a little bit more about the topic. Um, and, uh, and, um, so hopefully it's organized in a way that, that people who are in, in instructors, whether you're teaching intro psych, uh, to undergraduates, or a graduate level seminar, you can kind of go to your subfield and, and peruse this list of papers that you may have not have been exposed to in your education, right? And by people who aren't white in the field and, and hopefully use it to, uh, to diversify the voices and, and, and change kind of the way that, that psychology is taught in the, in the classroom. And so I, you know, I sort of previewed through a little bit about this and in a couple of weeks, we're going to release some episodes uh, really sort of centered around racism and talking about in the cl- that in the classroom. Mm-hmm. But this, what I like about this database is that, that, you know, that's not what this is about, right? These are papers that are about, you know, in my case, I like to study illusions of uh, memory, particularly around fluency. Um, mm-hmm. So this could be a chance to sort of make sure that I am reading broadly uh, yes. across the field, is that? Yeah. And I, and I, you know, and when I tweeted about this and, and I stress that this is, this is a database that has a really narrow purpose, right? In some ways it's, it's really about um, trying to highlight scientists, like BIPOC scientists, right? People that are doing work in our fields that aren't white. Um, yes, there are a lot of papers in this database that, that examine identity and race. Um, there are papers that um, uh, use populations that aren't, you know, uh, our weird psychology populations. I don't think that's a coincidence, right? That there's a lot of papers that are like that in this database. But the real purpose is to make it a real collection of papers by scientists of color, and, and in particular, Black and Indigenous um, psychologists. Uh, so th- that's kind of the the niche that this fits into, right? And that this is not um, 
there's there's a lot of other initiatives doing lots of other 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 things about decolonizing your syllabus and thinking about voices in the classroom. And this is kind of a resource that I hope that people find useful, right? About about you know bringing together all these all these wonderful uh, papers that you that may not be on our radars and we may not be teaching, and, and we should. So can you maybe like give an example about when you're teaching a class uh, and you've done this and you've been intentional? Um, I think there's, you know, kind of different approaches that people have about how explicit or implicit they are uh, about this being a goal. Um, Mm -hmm. Would you mind sort of sharing your perspective about what you do and maybe, you know, kind of how you can do it without um, inadvertently tokening, I think would be one concern that I would have. Yeah. And that was one, you know, I made this explicit when I tweeted this out and that was one concern that I had about this database, right? Am I, am I making it easy for people just to kind of pluck a few black scientists, right? Put them in their class, um, pat themselves on the back for doing that. Right. And then, and then making it so it's, it's, it becomes like a, a moment in the classroom where you're like, look at this black person, uh, that, you know, that I'm, I'm kind of holding up there and using as kind of a way to almost make yourself feel better rather than actually thinking about, uh, you know, critically about your pedagogy. Um, and, uh, and, you know, how, how I've kind of done that in the past in my classroom. So the, the class that I've done this mo- most purposefully in is, um, I teach a 300 level language development seminar for undergraduates. Um, and, uh, you know, when you think about language development, this is a, a field that's been really, really white and it has affected the way that we study language development, right? We're very focused on a certain, uh, cultural style of raising your children. It's led to, um, you know, a lot of, uh, racist claims about what the best, quote unquote, quote, best environment is um, for a kid learning language, right? Prioritizing um, some cultural practices over others, not um, because of any evidence other than, you know, this is what we, quote unquote, right, the white scientists uh, do. And so um, a couple of years ago, I, I, I changed up my syllabus quite a bit and um, used, brought in, first of all, um, um, debates around these issues, right? around things like um, cultural differences and how we read to children, how we interact with children. Um, But I also just brought in scientists of color um, into the class, right? If I was doing something on um, phonetic development, right? How, how, how babies learn the sounds of their language, right? Is there a scientist who studied this who isn't white? Um, And uh, what I did is that every time, every paper that, that we talked about, I would start with a slide that had the faces of all the people involved in the paper. Um, so people could really see who, who was doing this work. And throughout the semester, we had conversations where I'd explicitly ask students, right? Like, what, do, what are you seeing in terms of the patterns of who's studying this? And, and students are smart, right? They pick up on things and they, they would notice both, right? That, I, that there were kind of um, people of color that were doing this work. But we also had really good conversations about the fact that still, right, the majority of people doing this work were white. Um, and so that's kind of what I've settled in. I'm by no means perfect at this. There's a long way for me to go, but I think um, kind of highlighting who's behind this work and, and having students have these conversations about who's doing the work um, is a really good starting place and kind of, you know, letting the students take it, take the, take the reins too, and seeing what they are noticing and, and, and what they're seeing is I found really, really useful. Great. That's a, that is like a nice, helpful, balanced approach. And I think sort of consistent with the theme that I hear, you know, whether I'm uh, interviewing people for this or listening to the long form podcast that I mm-hmm. think, you know, part of teaching is uh, working yourself, but then also remembering that your students are having an experience and, and checking in with them and seeing what they're noticing. So I think that those are both, uh, that's a good, a good approach for your, for your classrooms. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, predict your students like you checking in to find out what they are thinking, right? I mean, that's the, I mean, I, I, you know, you've interviewed other people that I've mentioned this as well, but I think it's really um, surprising, you know, when you hear, surprising, I, I guess, in like kind of a disappointing way when you hear from students that are really grateful that you're including um, diverse, uh, vo- uh, you know, papers by people of color and also, you know, have examples and pictures of, of just not, not just white people. And it really makes you realize how, how little of that they get in college, right? The fact that, that it's really remarkable when a professor is, is making that effort, um, I think is a really, uh, uh, good reminder of how far we have to go. Yes, that's a good, that is a good, uh, perspective about right that yeah rather than feeling the sort of like exceptionalism that we do this use this to motivate in hopes that in a couple of years students don't they don't notice because now suddenly we've changed the um 
you know, the heuristic by which they expect to see papers. That's good. Yeah, and that's a good goal. Yeah. That's kind of the, the ultimate endpoint, right? It's not so that we have these, you know, if a couple people, one person in a department, one class in a department that's addressing uh, cross cultural issues, you know, issues around racism, uh, but that it's really embedded in uh, in the curriculum, right? So that this is part of how we teach psychology. Um, and man, that's that's going to be a hard change. And it's going to be a long one. It's going to take uh, a lot of thinking. And I, you know, I need to put in that work, uh, continue to put in that work. Um, but I'm hopeful. I mean, and, and I hope that this this resource, this spreadsheet, helps people um, at least take that first step. Right? Uh, it's that was kind of one of my goals: is how can I make this easy for people? Because you know, it's t- once once there's barriers in the way. I think, especially you know, we're all very busy. It's easy to kind of you know, say that you don't have time to do X, Y, and Z. And hopefully by having just this list of, of papers at, at your fingertips can help people take that first step just to kind of um, taking a critical eye and, and making some changes to the papers they're having their students read. That's great. I love, I love a clear first step that I can, I can do and don't have to think about the end, <laughs> right? I have to do all the work right now because that you're right, that can prevent us from even getting started if it all feels like too much. You know, you don't have to feel like you're an expert in leading a class discussion around race to just include the topics that you're already an expert in, but written from, right. you know, a diverse set of voices. And I, I think, think it's, it's, a- it's almost, it's almost kind of a foot in the door trick too, right? I mean, if you're, if you're, if you just go in there and you're like, okay, I don't want to change my syllabus too much. Um, but let me see if there's anyone that's studying, um, what I'm teaching that's non-white. And then you scroll through this and you're noticing, Hey, there's all these, um, other interesting topics, whether they're related to race or not, honestly, um, that I'm not teaching in my classroom. And, and hopefully that leads to, you know, deeper reflection about the, what you're including when you teach, for example, language development and what you're not including. And, um, my maybe naive optimistic self thinks that, you know, you start with just this kind of bringing in different voices, which I think is representation is important in and of itself. Um, but it could also be the kind of the first step in really kind of rethinking, um, more broadly kind of the, the perspectives and debates that we're, that we're teaching students. And the assumptions that we have, I just learned the phrase universal mind assumption, uh, last week. And I was like, I'm not even sure I know exactly what that means, but I'm pretty sure that's how I was raised to think about memory. So I think (laughs) I need to go totally go and do some work. Well, thank you so much, Erica. This is um, really helpful. Uh, people can find you on Twitter uh, if they want to, you know, sort of engage and learn more. But I hope that they will also um, use the database to uh, make some changes. So thank you for your time. Take yeah, care. And if, and if people haven't found the database, if you go to my um, my Twitter account, it's pinned in the top. And so you can read that thread and find the link to the database and how to submit. We're still looking for submissions. So um, please, please help us out with this effort. Yes, yes, exactly. Go forth and, you know, cite yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, terrific. Thank you so much. Take care. You're welcome.